Okay, the purpose of this video is to show how to use the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, and in this video, we're going to be using a calculator. There's other ways to do this uh, by using SIRDs and other methods, but in this case, we'll be allowed to use a calculator, which means we will round, we'll have to round the answers. And usually, a good rule of thumb is maybe to the hundredth place would be good. So basically, uh, most of you guys know already, the Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this only works for right triangles. And we see we have a right triangle here because it's indicated with this mark that shows that's a 90 degree angle or a, a right triangle. And uh, these a and the b and the c, uh, the a and the b can be reversed. These are the two legs. The two legs means they're the sides that are attached to or connect to the 90 degrees. You'll notice this leg is connected with the 90 degrees and this leg is connected with the 90 degrees. But this is not. And this is the side that is opposite the 90 degrees. And this side is called the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse always has to be C. But if you wanted to call this A and this B, uh, again, these two do not really matter so much. It's mainly the hypotenuse has to be opposite the 90 degrees and the legs A and B are connected to the 90 degree angle. Uh, so let's see what this means. You, uh, okay, let, so let's just do a few examples here. Okay, so in this example we have uh, one leg is the 8, see it's uh, connected to the 90 degree angle, and the other leg is a 6, it's connected to the 90 degree angle, and the third side, which we call the hypotenuse, which is opposite the 90 degree angle, we're going to label that as C. So again, this is going to be C, and then we can call this A and this B, again if you switch those and call it 8A and 6B, it would not matter, but the hypotenuse always has to be C, and so I'm going to write the formula up here too. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now notice with me just one second, uh, because this is a common mistake. This is not, you cannot just say, oh, well, let's just do, forget the squares for a second, and just do 8 plus 6 is 14, so the third side is 14. If you think about that, that will not form a triangle. Your two shorter sides will ex be exactly equal to the long side and there will be nothing uh, it will be no way to connect it you always have to have the two sides have to be greater than the third side for it to form even a triangle if you don't believe me you can try it on your own get some sticks and measure six centimeters eight centimeters and fourteen to see if you can make a triangle out of it, it does not work okay so uh, what we're going to do now we're going to replace the uh, a in our formula with 6, and we're going to put parentheses around it to make it clear, uh, and then squared, and then we're going to replace the b with 8, and then we're going to make that equal to c squared, so let's do that now. I'm going to call a 6, and then we're going to square that, because that's what our formula calls us to do, and b is 8, so I'm going to square that. Well, it's not completely necessary that you have those parentheses, but I think it helps kind of clarify things. Okay, so now we're just going to solve this, and in order to do that, we're going to do 6 squared is 36, and plus 8 squared, and 8 times 8 is 64, and that is equal to C squared. Uh, now the next step, we will combine these two, and we get 36 plus 64 is 100, equals c squared. Now 100 is not c. 100 is what c is squared. And so we know about inverse operations and if you have an addition on one side you can subtract from both sides. The inverse operation for uh, the sine squared right here is the square root. So if we take the square root of both sides, the square root of c squared and the square root of 100, the square root of c squared 
Well, that just simplifies to make it just C. And the square root of 100, most of you guys know, that's 10. So the third side is C equals 10. And you can double check that right here, or just kind of go back a step and see why that works, is C squared of 10 squared would equal 100. Okay, so uh, the C on this last oops this la this triangle the last leg is 10 okay that one worked out evenly let's try just a few more here all right how about this one we have uh, again you can see that this is one leg this is the other leg this is the hypotenuse we're going to label that c let's just call this a and this b this time again it doesn't really matter as long as the c is the hypotenuse Okay, and uh, we'll put our formula up here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, and so, uh, let me just carry that down here. Let's see, a squared, a squared is 4 squared plus b squared is 8 squared equals c squared. Uh, 4 squared is 16 plus 8 squared is 64 equals C squared. So now we have uh, 16 plus 64 is 80 equals C squared. Uh, and in this case, uh, we'll just go ahead and plug this into the calculator we take the square root of both sides and uh, when I put square root of 80 or depending on what kind of calculator you have you might have to put 80 and then press the square root sign after that uh, I get the decimal that's approximately 8.944 something da, 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 da. okay and so what I'm gonna do is round this to the hundredths place and I'm just gonna say that C is approximately, okay, this symbol for approximately 8.94 because this 4 will round down, okay? That's how you would do one with rounding. Okay, now sometimes you might get the problem, you'll notice here it's a little different, where you, instead of finding the hypotenuse always, we have one leg given to us that's 5. The other leg is connected to the 9 degrees. We don't know what that is. And then the hypotenuse is told to us that's 11. So we will still use the same formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We'll call, let's call this A. Let's call this B. And then again, we said the hypotenuse has to be C. So uh, we just plug it in, okay? If we say that a is 5, then we get 5 squared plus B. We don't know what B is, so we're just going to still call it B squared. And then we're going to put this equal to, uh, that's going to be 11 squared. Oops, can't see that too well. Okay, well, you can get the idea of the squared up here. Okay, so uh, 11 squared we know is 121 b squared, we can't do anything with that yet, and 5 squared is 25. Uh, now what we're going to do is subtract uh, 121 minus 25, and I do believe we end up with 96. Okay, again, if you want to see that over here, we're subtracting 25 to both sides, and we get, oops, let's draw that here, we get uh, 25 and 25 cancels. B squared equals 96. Okay. And the last step, we will take the square root of both sides and the square root and that one cancels. So we get B equals. And if I plug in the square root of 96 into the calculator, I get something like 9.7. Oh, it's 797, so we have to round that up to, uh, we'll do it approximately 9.8, 9.8 or 9.80.
Okay, so hopefully uh, that was just a few problems. We'll do some more uh, as you practice, but I uh, hope that was helpful. And see you on the next video.